Gee, stop it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so just uh, screening rate. And um, so we hope you enjoy. And I'm now gonna pass over to Elspeth, who's really uh, nicely organized everything. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Elspeth Samuel, and I'm a member of the Rice uh, University chapter of the American Lung Cancer Screening Initiative, or RALC for short. And today I'll be giving a quick presentation on lung cancer and lung cancer screening. And I'm extremely grateful for everyone's time today. So thank you. Okay, so before we get started, I'd like to request for everyone to please um, save your questions for the end. Um, I'd be more than happy to take them. And um, if you're interested in learning more about the, um, Ralsi, would like to um, invite you to visit our website, um, which is www.ralsi.org or um, our national website, which is www.ralsi.org. And if you have any questions at any time, um, please feel free to email any of the um, Ralsi members. Okay, so before I get into the um, content of the presentation, um, I want to share a little bit about what the American Lung Cancer Screening Initiative does. So ALSI is a nonprofit that works to um, raise awareness for lung cancer and lung cancer screening. Um, we're a team of over 70 passionate uh, students and doctors across the United States. And so we've worked with uh, community organizations like the South Asian Network and um, American Indian Cancer Foundation, as well as city and state health departments, including the NYC and Connecticut departments. And we hope that in educating communities about lung cancer and lung cancer screening, high-risk community individuals will um, be encouraged to seek um, cancer screening. So today we'll discuss both lung cancer and lung cancer screening and address some of the questions such as how, um, how can someone get screened for lung cancer, what is lung cancer screening, um, and how to just go about the entire situation. Okay, so to start things off, uh, lung cancer is very common. Um, it's actually the second most common cancer in the US, excluding skin cancer. Uh, this graph shows the American Cancer Society estimates for the number of new um, cancer cases in 2022. Um, in the United States for the four most common cancers. So as you can see, it's estimated that over um, 236,000 people uh, will be diagnosed with lung cancer in 2022 in the US alone. So to put this uh, into perspective, it's estimated that about 6% of people will develop lung cancer during their lifetime in the US. So that means about one in every 15 uh, men and one in every 17 women will be diagnosed with lung cancer. Okay, and so while the stats that we have, uh, that we've been able to gather for the UK aren't as up to date, um, I would like to share some of them with you guys today. So it's been reported that there are um, around 35, um, 35,000, uh, over 35,000 lung cancer deaths in the UK every year. So that's about 96 deaths every year. And um, this data was um, collected in um, the year of 2016, 2018. And so a few other uh, important facts um, we wanted to share with you guys today is that it was estimated that about 79% of lung cancer cases that were recorded were preventable. And um, there are around uh, 48,000 new lung cancer cases in the UK every year. And each year, more than, four, um, more than four in 10 of all new lung cancer cases in the UK are diagnosed in people um, aged um, over the age of 75. Um, and lung cancer, lung cancer incidences rates have uh, decreased um, by around a tenth in the UK since the 1900s, which is a really good thing. But however, the rates um, in females have increased by around a third, uh, and the rates in males have decreased by around a third as well. So, um, sorry, the rates of females have increased by a third, and the rates of males have decreased by a third. Um, and however, the rise in female mortality from lung cancer is expected to, de uh, to decrease in 2022. So that is great news. Um, but moreover, uh, not only is lung cancer very common, but it's also extremely fatal, as I'm sure many of you probably know. Um, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the US and actually in the world. And in 2022, it's estimated that lung cancer will claim the lives of over uh, 130,000 people. And this graph shows that um, shows the American Cancer Society estimates for the number of cancer-related deaths in the US. Um, and as you can see, lung cancer is far more fatal than both uh, breast, prostate, and colon cancer combined. 
um, lung cancer makes up almost 25% of all cancer deaths, resulting in about um, 350 deaths each, uh, each day. And every year there are about uh, 50,000 more new cases of breast cancer, but lung cancer causes over 90,000 more um, deaths every year. So if we look at uh, lung cancer incidences and mortality um, by sex and race, um, we can see that among males, lung cancer incidences is highest in black males um, at an incidence rate of 71.7 uh, per 100,000 people. Um, and among females, lung cancer incidence is highest in white females at an incidence rate of 51.1. Uh, Mortality rates mirror incidence rates, so black males have the highest mortality rate amongst males, while white females have the highest mortality rate uh, amongst females. Uh, and from this data, uh, the question that arises is why is lung cancer mortality so high? Um, well, lung cancer mortality is high because patients are typically diagnosed at a later stage. So this graph um, <clears throat> is looking at the proportion of patients with lung cancer uh, by stage. So stage is a, a way for the doctors to classify a cancerous tumor based on the tumor size. Um, and if the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes and if, the, um, if it's spread to other locations in the patient's body. So currently uh, most lung cancer cases are diagnosed at a distant stage when the cancer has spread beyond the site um, where it originated. And this graph is based off data from 2008 to 2017, which was published by the National Cancer Institute. And as we can see, about 21% of patients are diagnosed at a localized stage, while um, about 51% um, are diagnosed at a later stage when the cancer has spread to other locations in the body. And so why is this important? Um, it's important because the stage that lung cancer is diagnosed correlates directly with survival. And we'll see that on the next slide. Okay, so uh, one way the doctors track the survival of patients is by looking at the five-year survival. And as you can see here, the five-year survival for lung cancer at the early stage is high, but the five-year survival significantly drops as the uh, disease progresses. And this graph is another way to understand the relationship between the stage at diagnosis and the five-year survival. Um, the five-year survival for patients with localized lung cancer is 59% but only 23% of lung cancers are diagnosed at that stage. Um, in comparison, nearly half of the lung cancers are diagnosed at a distant stage. And this is, and this is um, why early detection of lung cancer is extremely important. If we can detect lung cancer at an earlier stage, the treatment options will be much better, as well as the prognosis. So with lung cancer being such a morbid disease, um, some of you might be wondering why the majority of lung, cancer, um, lung cancers are diagnosed at a later stage. Um, well, the majority of patients are diagnosed with, lung can with, um, with late stage lung cancer because they don't start feeling any of the symptoms of lung cancer until it's kind of grown and spread across um, different areas of the body. And so the most common symptoms of lung cancer are chronic cough, coughing up blood, chest pain, shortness of breath, um, and additional symptoms may include um, loss of appetite, fatigue, persistent lower uh, respiratory infections. Um, and however, when people become symptomatic, the cancer has grown and spread at a point where it's more difficult to treat and prognosis is extremely poor. And if the diagnosis of lung cancer has to wait until the patient has symptoms, it's difficult to catch the lung cancer early. And so the question we ask is, how, do, um, how can we catch lung cancer early if patients are asymptomatic? So one of, one of the best ways we can do that is through lung cancer screening. So lung cancer screening is done using something called the low-dose computed tomography scan. And if you're eligible for lung cancer screening, it's recommended that you get an annual lung cancer scan. Um, in the coming slides, we'll discuss what lung, lung cancer screening is and who should get screened and how to get screened. So an important distinction we want to make is that lung cancer screening is done using low-dose com computer tomography, um, also known as low-dose CT, um, and not the chest x-ray. Uh, we, we use low-dose CT scans because it provides more detailed pictures uh, than chest x-rays can, and it's better at finding small abnormal areas in the lungs. Um, so the picture on the left is a picture um, of a chest x-ray. The yellow arrows point to the abnormal area in the lungs, but it's unclear as we can kind of see. And on the other hand, the image on the right is a picture of um, low-dose CT scans of the chest. The red, arrow, uh, the red arrows point to the abnormal area in the lung, 
And as you can see, this image is much more detailed than the chest X-ray and enables us to kind of see that abnormal area in the lung with greater detail. Um, and so the question that researchers want, want to answer is how effective is low dose CT scans at detecting lung cancer at an earlier stage? An important lung cancer screening a trial called National Lung Cancer Screening um, trial, trial or NLST for short, tried to answer this question. So the NLST was a, um, a large national study with over 50,000 patients. And the goal of the study um, was to determine the effectiveness of uh, using low-dose CT scans to detect lung cancer in patients considered high risk for a lung cancer. And so the study included two groups, a group of patients who received annual low-dose CT scans and a group of patients who received an annual chest X-ray. Um, and by comparing the stages at which the cancers were caught between these two groups, the study uh, wanted to determine if low-dose CT scans was a better way of catching more lung cancers at an early stage. And so as we can see, um, of everyone diagnosed with lung cancer, the low dose CT scans caught the most lung cancers at an earlier stage, while the X-ray diagnosed more patients at stage four. Um, this has important implications for survival because low dose CT scans caught more lung cancers at an early stage. And these cancers were um, more likely to be treatable and the prognosis was much better in comparison. And this translates to about a 20% reduction in mortality for those who underwent lung cancer screening using those low dose CT scans compared to um, the X-ray. So lung cancer screening significantly reduces lung cancer mortality but who should get screened for lung cancer? So um, the United States Pre Preventative Service Task Force, also known as the USPSTF, um, sets guidelines for who should be screened for lung cancer. Uh, right now, they recommended that people between the ages of 50 to 80 who um, have a 20 pack year smoking history or greater and who are um, current or former smoke, uh, smokers who quit within the past 15 years um, should get um, annual low dose CT scans. So the current uh, screening guidelines require people to have um, a 20 pack year smoking history. And so um, now a pack year is probably a term that most of you have not heard before, but it's uh, just a way for doctors to track your smoking history over a period of time. A pack year is defined as smoking a pack of cigarettes per day for a year. So for example, if you were to smoke um, one pack a day for 20 years, that would equate to a 20 pack year smoking history. And alternatively, if you were to smoke two packs a day for, for um, 10 years, uh, that would also equate to a 20-pack um, year smoking history. So the important takeaway of that was just so that you could see that there's different ways to reach that 20-pack year um, smoking history. Um, this is, again, this is just a way for doctors to help track um, one smoking history. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, smoking is the primary risk factor for lung cancer. Uh, when compared with when compared with people who've uh, never smoked uh, cigarettes, a current smoker has 25 times greater risk of lung cancer. About eight out of 10 um, deaths of, the, of lung cancer in 2022 are expected to be caused from smoking cigarettes. Um, and after smoking, the leading cause of lung cancer is exposure to radon gas, which is released from soil and can build up indoors. Um, moreover, second um, hand smoking has also caused about 3% of new diagnosis of lung cancer and, expected, and it's expected to cause about 3% uh, of deaths in 2022. Additional risk factors include um, family history of lung cancer, COPD, and um, previous radiation therapy to the lungs. It's important that we recognize these additional risk factors as well, because although lung cancer has a strong association with smoking, um, there are a large number of people in the U.S. who've never smoked that are still um, at risk for lung cancer. Um, so uh, never smokers are defined as individuals who've smoked, um, who've smoked less than uh, 100 cigarettes in their lifetime. Because lung cancer has such a strong association with smoking, people are often surprised to learn that lung cancer is in never smokers accounts for about 10 to even 20% of lung cancer diagnosis. And, um, in, and it's actually the eighth leading cause of um, lung cancer related deaths in the US and in the world. Um, um, moreover, never smokers die from lung cancer each year. Um, more um, never smokers die from lung cancer each year than people die from ovarian cancer. Um, and this graph shows the proportion of lung cancer cases that occur in people who've smoked in their life and people who've never smoked. 
Um, it is then further broken down by whether they're current or former or never smokers. And as you can see, 80 to 90% of lung cancers occur um, in people who have smoked during their lifetime, and about 10 to 20 occur in never smokers. And interestingly enough, um, women are more likely to be never smokers when diagnosed with lung cancer. In fact, um, in the US, 60 to 70% of never smokers diagnosed with lung cancer are um, females. And right now, lung cancer screening is not um, recommended for individuals who've never smoked. Um, however, understanding lung cancer and never smokers is um, a current focus of many research. And with the development of new uh, screening technologies and risk models, uh, there, there may be a way to identify high-risk individuals um, who, should have, who should be screened for lung cancer. So um, in summary, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the US. And it's also um, extremely deadly because most lung cancers are diagnosed, um, most lung cancer cases are diagnosed at a later stage when they've spread to the body, um, different areas in the body. And importantly, early detection through lung cancer screening by the use of low-dose CT scans can reduce lung cancer mortality by about 33%. Um, and currently, uh, only 5.7% of high-risk individuals are currently getting screened for lung cancer, um, which is extremely concerning. And to highlight how um, low this number really is, we compare, um, we're comparing the lung cancer screening rate to the screening rates for breast, uh, breast cervical, um, as well as colon cancer. And the American Lung um, Association estimates that if we were to screen every high-risk individual recommended by the USPSTF in the US, we would save over 48,000 lives. However, we're only screening 5.7%, which means that a lot of lives that could be saved um, are not being saved. And so our follow-up question is, why is that? Lung cancer screening rate is low for a number of reasons, including limited awareness and concerns about access to screening and the costs of screening, of course, and the safety of screening. In the next slides, we'll discuss each of these topics. And the important takeaway, though, is that um, lung, cancer, lung cancer screening can help reduce an um, one's risk of dying from lung cancer. So the first uh, potential concern we'll address is the cost of lung cancer, a lung cancer screening. Um, the average low-dose CT scan costs anywhere from $300 to $400 in the U.S., but most insurance companies, including Medicare and Medicaid, will cover the cost for eligible um, patients. However, there are a few exceptions. So Medicare will only cover lung cancer screening until the age of 77, um, not all, and not all state Medicaid plans cover lung cancer screening, and patients will still pay the usual fees for provider appointments before or after the scan. And as we uh, just mentioned, unfortunately, not all states Medicaid plans cover lung cancer screening. Here is a map um, that was updated in September 2021, uh, showing which states Medicaid plans do and do not cover uh, lung cancer screening. Blue states have um, state medical plans that cover lung cancer screening, and the purple states, um, and in the purple states, their state Medicaid plan does not cover lung cancer screening. And in pink, um, we don't have enough information available at the moment. So um, the first step to getting a patient screened for lung cancer is having them talk to their primary care provider. Um, there are certain questions a primary care provider has to ask and topics that have to be discussed. Um, and one of these is the patient's pack here smoking history, which we saw um, how to cal calculate in the earlier slide. Um, I'll skip this slide. And as far as how the experience of getting a low-dose CT scan goes, um, it will require you to lay on your back for about five minutes. Um, you'll be doing something very similar to the patient in the photo here. Um, and one thing to note is that this process will not hurt whatsoever um, because this is a low-dose CT scan. Um, and this means that there will there won't be like there won't be any needles. It will be non-invasive and it'll be quick. Um, less than five minutes and the low dose CT scan um, is extremely fast and com completely painless. So the additionally, the amount of radiation um, that you're exposed to, if that's a concern, is also extremely low. Uh, so a low dose CT scan exposes you to less radiation than you're exposed to from just existing on earth, uh, which means that the level of radiation you receive from the annual lung cancer screening test is very small. With that being said, uh, this is always something that patients can discuss further with their um, uh, primary care um, providers if they are concerned. 
And a question we get often is how vaping and e-cigarettes use uh, e-cigarettes use affects lung cancer risks. So vaping and e-cigarettes are relatively uh, a new phenomenon and have become more prevalent in the last decade. And while the long long term effects of vaping and e-cigarettes are still being studied, um, it's clear that for individuals who've never smoked before, um, they're who have smoked um, e-cigarettes before are at an increased risk for lung cancer. And e-cigarette devices and vaping fluids contain nicotine derivatives and heavy metals among other chemicals. And these arise both as elements of e-liquid and as, and as a result of organic reactions um, in the electronic cigarette device. Various studies um, have demonstrated in vitro uh, tr um, transforming the activity of these derivatives and vaping, vaping causes fewer health risks than smoking, but it's not a risk-free uh, activity. And so that's important to consider. Um, the vaping can increase the heart, the heart rate, decrease air volume in the lungs, and increase airway resistance. And furthermore, e-cigarette devices um, use has been significantly increasing, particular, particularly among young adults and non-smokers, um, making an area of significant concern for our future. And as this presentation comes to a conclusion, um, I want to end on what we, the American Lung Cancer Screening Initiative, are currently doing and have been doing to um, increase the awareness and education and advocacy efforts necessary to increase lung cancer screening rates. Uh, lung cancer is the deadliest cancer in the world, and while lung cancer screening has <clears throat> can save can save so many lives, very few high-risk individuals are currently getting screened, and we're working to address all aspects of this issue. We wrote and actually advocated for House and uh, Senate resolutions expressing support for lung cancer, um, Awareness Month, and, and um, early detection through lung cancer screening. And last December, our Senate resolution was um, passed uh, with consent. And additionally, we were working to uh, teach communities across the country about lung cancer and lung cancer screening. Um, and lung cancer, as I've mentioned, is the deadliest cancer in the world, but by working together, we can overcome and save so many millions of lives together. And it starts by working to raise awareness and initiate lung cancer screening programs within our communities. Um, and we believe that uh, by educating community members, especially students, um, about lung cancer and lung cancer screening, it's, um, this is a crucial way of lowering the number of deaths associated with this disease. Um, students um, play a great role and influence the health care of their uh, parents as well. And we hope that by educating students about important measures that can be taken, um, we'll not only be able to help the students, but um, also their family members indirectly. Um, and yes, now I want to open the floor to any questions that you guys may have, and I can do my best to answer them. Um, thank you all for your time. I'm extremely grateful um, to have been able to present to you all today. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, and if there's any questions that I'm not able to answer, um, I'll be more than happy to um, speak to some of the other LC members and send a follow-up email. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions for LC 